In the previous video, we introduced complex loading in two dimensions, and in that example, we were given stress values in the x and y directions, and from there we calculated the strain values, we calculate the changes in length in the x and y direction, and we calculated the change in area of the plate resulting from that complex loading situation. What we have this time is we have known strain values, and using those known strain values, we're going to calculate the stresses in the x and y directions that cause those strain values. Now, the first thing to know is that we have a strain in the x direction of 0 0.00015, or 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4. And we have a strain in the y direction of minus 0 0.00008, or minus 8 times 10 to the minus 5. Now, I want to point out the importance here of the fact that we have a negative for the strain. When we apply our conventions, anything that causes the plate to stretch or elongate is positive, where anything that causes the plate to shrink or contract is negative. Now, the same is true with the stresses, and we need to be really careful with our sign conventions here. If the stress is causing the plate to elongate, then the stress is positive. If the stress is causing the plate to contract, then the stress is negative. And we have an interesting case here because what we don't know is whether the stress in the y direction being applied to this phase here is going to be positive or negative. The reason we don't know is because the stress in the x direction may be causing an induced strain or we may be applying a compressive or a tensile stress in that direction in order to balance the stress in the x direction. So as we calculate through here, we need to be really careful with our sign conventions because the sign conventions that we come out with for our solutions is going to indicate the direction of the stresses. We have some additional data for our plate. This time we have a plate that's 145 millimeters by 220 millimeters. We have a Poisson's ratio of 0 0.29 and an elastic modulus of 205 gigapascals. Although the dimensions of the plate are given here, the only time that would be useful is if we were looking at the changes in dimensions of the plate. You'll notice in the two equations on the right hand side, we don't have the lengths x and y in those equations. What we're working with here is strains, which tell us about the amount of deformation relative to the length, and stresses, which tells us about how much force is being applied per unit area. Therefore, although the dimensions of a plate are given there, because we're not calculating changes in areas, those are somewhat redundant for this example. However, we can calculate our stresses. First of all, we're going to calculate sigma x. Now, once again, we need to be really careful here because our elastic modulus is in gigapascals. So we have 205 times 10 to the 9 divided by 1 minus our Poisson's ratio squared, 0 0.29 squared. We have our strain in the x direction. Now our strain in the x direction is positive and it's 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4. And to that we need to add our Poisson's ratio, 0 0.29, times our strain in the y direction. And this is where we need to be careful because our strain in the y direction is negative, minus eight times 10 to the minus five. So I'm going to put a bracket around our Poisson's ratio times our strain in the y direction. And then I'm going to close the main bracket. Now I'm going to run all of that through the calculator and I'm going to take special care to include my negative over here. 0 0.29 times negative 8 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, so we have a value for sigma x and sigma x comes out as positive. We'll make a note of that. 28.38 megapascals. The reason it's megapascals is because on my calculator display I have 28.38 times 10 to the 6. Okay, let's calculate our sigma y. We have sigma y equals e, 205 times 10 to the 9, over 1 minus our Poisson's ratio squared, so 1 minus 0.29 squared. We have our strain in the y direction this time, 
So our negative comes first, equals 8 times 10 to the minus 5. Once again, we need to be really careful to include our sign convention. And to that, we're adding 0 0.29 times epsilon x. Epsilon x is positive, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4. OK, so let's run that through the calculator and see what we get for sigma y. And sigma y comes out to be minus 8.17 megapascals. Okay, so this is where the conventions are important because we have a stress in the x direction which is positive and as we said at the start of the video, a positive stress is anything that's causing the plate to lengthen or elongate in this direction. So we have sigma x as 28.38 megapascals. However, sigma y comes out as negative. It's negative, so it means it's a compressive stress in this direction. And the stress is 8.17 MPa. The fact that it's compressive, we can indicate with a negative sign here, or we can indicate with the direction of the arrow. The important thing to remember is if it's causing a length to shorten, as in the case of the 220 millimeter dimension, then it's negative. And if it's causing the dimension to lengthen, as in the case of the 145 millimeter dimension, then the stress is positive. Once again, we could use our strain values to determine the change in area of that plate. But for details on how to do that, please refer back to the previous video. Thanks for listening.